is the first official podcast interview that we're doing here in the home studio. And just so everyone knows, this wall, this whole room actually is painted black, thanks to yours truly, Michael Kappa from Altona Painting. So, um, Michael, appreciate you coming by today. I'm excited to chat. Yeah, I'm really grateful to be here, man. Yeah, man, this has been a long time coming. I know we wanted to do this for a while. Um, So let's kind of just jump right into it. So a small introduction, Michael Kappa is the founder, owner, um, and still actively painting for Altona Painting. Uh, You've been doing this for how long now? I think this would be my seventh year in business. Seventh year in business. You're based in Durham. You just moved recently to, where is it? Scarborough. So you're in Scarborough now. Yeah. You were in Pickering. Yep. Okay. And um, you've got a whole team now going on, don't you? Yeah. So at the time of this recording, there's about four guys on the team full time and myself. Okay. So yeah, we got a pretty good unit going. Okay. Okay. Well, I definitely want to ask a couple, a few questions today about um, the, the history and the origin of Altona painting, but starting off with kind of the history and origin of yourself, Michael, before you got into even the idea of creating Altona painting, what were you doing before becoming a full-time entrepreneur painter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be as quick as I can be with this (laughs) because lots of entrepreneurial endeavors, but um, when I was in elementary and high school, I had a paper route. So that was a very interesting job to have because it taught me that you get out what you put in to something. Mm -hmm. So I was responsible for 65 houses on my paper route. Okay. And uh, that was a really good job I had for five years from grade eight to grade 12. I bought a drum set with the earnings from that. I paid for boxing. I paid for soccer. I paid for some nice clothes. And I was like, hey, this entrepreneur thing's kind of cool. And when I was in grade 11, I rented a rototiller one spring and I went around one day and worked a 15 hour day and the money I earned from that, I bought my first iPhone five. Okay. Nice. So I've had the entrepreneurial bug for a long time. So you've always been a hustler. Oh yeah. Were your, were your parents like that too? Or is, are you kind of the first generation in your family to be like entrepreneurial? My dad's a, my dad was an entrepreneur. Okay. Yeah, he's retired now, but he used to run an ad agency. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So you kind of, did you, did you find that growing up with a dad that ran his own business? Do you think that contributed to, contributed to your desire to want to also run your own thing? I think so. I think so. My dad, both my parents are people's, are are really good communicators. Relationship building is really important to both of them. But my dad was always the guy and still is the guy that knows everyone. Mm. And he was always the one rallying the troops for putting together big galas, um, putting together company events, organizing things, you know. So I definitely get that uh, from my dad. For okay, sure. cool. I don't know if we're going to hear those sirens in the background, but <laughs> I, live on a, I live on a main road. So you're going to hear sirens all throughout this podcast. They're out to get me. <laughs> You're dressed like a mafia boss today, man. Tell me a little bit about your style. Like you have, you have a really cool style. Where did, where did you learn your style? And like, do you draw any inspiration from anybody or anything? Yeah. So I've always been the person, the type of person that marches to the beat of their own drum. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I've always had an affinity towards really like slim looking, lean looking suits. Mm -hmm. And, uh, green is my mom's favorite color. Okay. So I guess it's like kind of sort of my favorite color too. <laughs> cool. yeah. Um and and uh yeah, I've just always been a goofy guy, so I got my Pikachu socks here. Wicked. And you know, I like to strike a balance of looking like sophisticated and professional but still being able to have my character shine through. Yeah. So what you see is what you get. And for anyone that doesn't know Michael, that's so true. Like what you see him wearing That is just like a reflection of this guy's personality because like (laughs) when he needs to be sophisticated and business first, he can be clearly because he runs a good business, but he's also got this like fun, funky, groovy side inside of him, which shows through your your dress. So I think it's cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. No worries, man. Um, So, okay. So you've always kind of had this entrepreneurial bug and you, you mentioned that you've had 
a number of endeavors. Mm -hmm. Would you be open to sharing a couple of those endeavors that maybe didn't work out for you? Oh, sure. Sure. I'll share the ones that did and didn't work. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that sounds good. <laughs> so I started painting when I was 15 because one of my paper route customers. So this is partially why I brought up the paper route was mm -hmm. because one of my customers one summer was like, hey, do you want to paint my fence? And I had never wielded a paintbrush in my life. So I was like, OK, sure, because I'm very opportunistic and open minded to trying new yeah. things which has served me mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that later on as I share some of my new services. But, um, at the, at the time this was really cool and it opened my mind to like trying new things. So when I was 18, I was approached with the, I, the opportunity to run a student painting franchise. Okay. And in my first year of university, um, in the summertime, I ran a student painting franchise in Pickering. Really? Yeah. Okay. So that was be that was pre Altona painting. That's pre Altona painting. Okay. So you were you so you've been in the painting business since before Altona then. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. And so what happened with that? It was fantastic, man. Like I was profitable. I uh, the earnings I made from that summer paid for my second year at school. Nice. I um, really learned the value of like customer service and communication and like being accountable to my team. And it was really interesting because I had crews of painters that summer and I really, for the first time in my life, felt the fire under my butt of being accountable to providing work for people. Yeah. And it was, it was crazy because I was trying this new thing for myself, but then I was also like, I looking back on it now, um, it was quite the experience. But uh, it, it definitely set me up to have like an ironclad mindset and level of accountability to my team members now. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the endeavors that I tried that didn't work out was I tried to do one of those uh, like reishi coffee businesses. Okay. <laughs> where okay. You, where you sell like the special coffee with the mushrooms in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that didn't work out, huh? No, that didn't work. All right. No, that was an abysmal failure. <laughs> <laughs> so you figured painting, you got to stick to painting, man. I was like, painting. Painting's your calling. <laughs> so, sorry, go ahead. I feel like you're going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say service-based business. I'm really good with both my mind and my hands. And trying to sell people on health food products, I was like, this is not my bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> so when did... Altona painting come to life like when what was your first year of operation so our first year of operation was 2018 okay and I decided to start the business because in the summer of 2017 I was traveling in Peru okay and I was on an internship for school and I really liked working and traveling and I was like hey how can I make this working and traveling thing a thing long term mm -hmm. and at, even at that time, I was doing some research and learning about like building wealth and real estate investing and this and that. So I was like, okay, I need to figure out or problem solve building assets that pay me so that I can work and travel and live on the road. And, uh, and the one thing that I knew how to do to generate income was painting. Mm -hmm. So when I was in Peru that summer, I was like, all right, next summer when I'm done school, I'm going to start a painting business okay and and i was like i'm gonna call it altona painting like my rock band from high school <laughs> oh is that okay i was gonna i was my next question was gonna be where did the name altona painting come from yeah yeah it was my rock band in grade 11 and grade 12. okay you got to tell us a little bit about your rock band now because <laughs> if because that's one important thing you guys are going to know about michael is that one of his i guess you could say one of the pillars to what makes michael michael is the fact that he's a musician so tell us a little bit about that yeah, so I've been playing the drums since I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And some of my biggest influences are like Led Zeppelin, Rush, Metallica. Um, just recently, I started taking jazz lessons. So okay. I'm like not only a rock and a bit of a metal drummer, but now I'm starting to venture into the jazz foray. <laughs> jazz, jazz is a whole whole new beast, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, at the time, yeah, in high school, our band, we decided to call it Altona because that's where we all grew up, just off Altona Road in Pickering. It's funny because I was just on that road today 
nice. shooting a listing on Altona Road. And I was thinking about you. I was like, this is such a coincidence because like Michael's coming over today and I'm on Altona Road right now doing some some work. I, and I wasn't sure if that was the reason why you called it Altona Painting, but I was like, I wonder if Michael named it Altona Painting because of Altona Road. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. that's exactly why. That's interesting, okay. Altona the Band named from Altona the Road and then Altona Painting named from Altona the Band. <laughs> So what happened to the band, man? You guys broke up? Uh, sadly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's okay. It was probably not meant to be anyways. <laughs> but it's good that you're still into it. You're still you're still practicing on it like a daily basis, right? You're drumming? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I rehearse uh, about four times a week. That's I'm, amazing. I'm back at lessons. Um, I meal prep and exercise pretty religiously to stay in shape because as a drummer, you're not just a drummer. You're an athlete. Mm. Right, I'm using yeah. all of my limbs. I got to play for long durations of time. There's lots of repetitive motion. You know, you can't be a slouch. Yeah, no, I hadn't thought about that. Is there certain exercises that you do to help with the functionality of being a drummer? Yeah, and this is actually relevant to painting too. Okay. Because there's a lot of repetitive ma- repetitive motions with uh, waxing on and waxing off. Yeah, karate kid <laughs> reference. <for you. laughs> so uh, lots of yoga. Okay. Lo- lots of Pilates. Nice. Lots of like body weight exercises. Calisthenics and stuff like that. Like you do like push ups, pull ups, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 I used to love lifting weights, but then I realized I was like, this isn't really serving me for painting or drumming. Right. Right. Unless your paintbrushes are really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Okay. So. Altona painting, 2017, did you say, or 2018? Uh, 2018, 2018, year one. When it started. Yeah. Okay. Tell me a little bit about, like, what that journey was like when you started. Because, like, anybody who is an entrepreneur thinking about getting ent- into entrepreneurship has to know that, like, it is an uphill battle through and through. Mm-hmm. Like, and, it, and I don't think it ever stops being an uphill battle. Because, mm-hmm. like, the more you grow the new like the more challenges you actually end up facing or newer challenges that you didn't face before so tell me about your journey from 2018 to now what are what are some of the things that you went through as a business owner as you grew what are some of those roadblocks that you faced kind of give us the whole spiel Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so i'll liken this to writing like a research paper in university it's a very multifaceted thing but if you just break it down and say like okay, um, you know, this is what I'm going to say. This is how I prove it. If you just make it bite sized it's easy to do, right? Running a business is much the same way. Mm -hmm. If you just break it down, sales, marketing, admin, uh, production, um, you know, once you, once you start getting really deep and analytical, uh, this is just how my brain works. Yeah, man. It's like, I I love it. It's like actually, really simple if you're just doing each of those things one by one where it becomes challenging is when you have to do all those things at the same time every day and even if you delegate and you hire team members you still have to oversee those things right so as you what i what where i've faced barriers and still face barriers but i'm over able to overcome them a little better now is um you just you as you work on each facet of your business, you're going to learn things the hard way. You're going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You're going to be faced with challenges that um, you didn't think you were up to the challenge to execute on. But when your back's against the wall and you need to make things happen and you adopt responsibility and you're accountable to your clients, you're accountable to your team, you're accountable to your suppliers, um, just putting yourself in a position where you're out of your comfort zone and you're at that next level of accountability, you have no choice but to perform. You have no choice but to do the things that you said you would do. And if you don't know the answer, then you have to be either extremely resourceful or very honest or both. Mm -hmm. Because there have been things in the past that I didn't know how to do and I know how to do them now, but... I only was able to overcome challenges for like learning how to, uh, you know, do a lot of techniques with like drywall taping or skim coating or painting techniques or, you know, like 
now now we do things like spray painting and stucco removal and all those kinds of things like in the past if you came up to me in my first year of business and said hey michael are you able to do all these services i would have said absolutely not <laughs> right but as time went on and i realized that i have to adapt to the needs of the market i i said okay well i'm going to either hire someone to come and train me and my team so that we can learn how to do it or i'm going to leverage the skills of someone who definitely can do this so that i can still maintain my commitment to customers when they say hey can you do this service for me and i rather than in the past where i deflected or defer it now it's yeah absolutely cuz i know that i can be resourceful to either learn how to do it myself or um have someone on my team that has the years of experience execute on it right have you i'm curious have you ever like on that topic have you ever said yes to a job or project that in the moment you didn't know how to do and then you said yes to it and you like scrambled up until the project day you're like okay i got to learn how to do this or there are some screws cuz i already said yes oh absolutely yeah. <laughs> without a doubt i feel like i'm still doing that to this day man without a doubt yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but that's um that's part of the fun is you I mean maybe in the moment you you might feel the heat, you might feel the stress, but looking back yeah. on it, you'll say to yourself like I'm so glad I did that because yeah. now I know how to do something new or I have someone on my team who I can leverage their skills and like I can provide that service. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like you said, like having your back up against the wall. Sometimes that's what you need to be able to push further, right? And so I feel like when you're putting yourself in that un uncomfortable situation of like forcing yourself to have to learn something in a certain amount of time to be able to complete the project you committed to, mm -hmm. there's nothing like, there's nothing that says back up against the wall like that. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that comes to mind too, is as you're going along in your business, you realize that there's always better ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. Right. So with production, for example, like, if I looked at how 2018 Michael ran a job site versus 2024 Michael runs a job site, I can tell you they're two completely different things. Can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like? What that would have looked like back in 2018 versus now? Oh my goodness. I'm curious now how different <laughs> it, would, it would look. Sure. Okay. Um, I'll try and be quick about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in the past, I wouldn't touch a paintbrush until all the prep was done. Okay. Whereas now I kind of do a hybrid model where we prep and paint some stuff at the same time because it's actually more efficient and effective to like, for example, if I have to paint something two coats, I'll do a little bit of prep to it and then I'll paint a coat on it and then I can see the remaining prep mm -hmm. and then I finish the prep and then I paint it and it's done. Right. We're, and that's a lot more efficient than like doing all the prep and not touching a paintbrush. Um, so things like that, uh, just the way we are more efficient with like, like I said, each step of the process, um, taping up our work orders, like on a window in the client's home or project. So I'll say like, Hey team, like this is what we're doing. This is what we're here to do. This is what, this is the agreement I've made with the customer. And, uh, this way everyone's on the same page with what's getting done quite literally because it's taped up at the right. customer's house. Whereas in the past, like I wouldn't do that. Yeah. It was kind of more, it was a little bit more chaotic. You could say at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that's something that we all learn as business owners is like at the beginning stages, like organization is something that I feel like we all learn through the process of running a business. Because I don't think there's anybody, maybe maybe there's some people that are just hyper-organized from the get-go, but like, I feel like there's a lot of people that start off being very disorganized until they start to see all these gaps and holes that their business has, and mm -hmm. then they can finally kind of put those things together and kind of piece the puzzle together like you have with Altona Painting over the last seven years, right? Because I think you guys run a pretty, pretty good ship now. I mean, I've seen it firsthand. I've done some work with you guys in terms of being on site and shooting with you guys, and I think you guys have an incredible operation going and and from the feedback that i have heard from your clients too like you guys not only you but your team has been able to 
uphold this standard of customer service that I think your clients really appreciate. Mm -hmm. How did you, like when you're hiring team members and when mm -hmm. you're training them, what are some of the, besides the actual technical skills of painting and, mm -hmm. and, and taping and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. what are some of the core values that you try to instill into your team members that you want to uphold as the represent, as a representative of Altona painting? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This actually, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, kind of relates to your last question too, which is culture, mm. the culture at Altona painting from its inception to current day has changed yeah. dramatically. So when we're looking for new team members, we're looking for people who are trustworthy, reliable, accountable, uh, cooperative, they, excuse me, they play well with others, they communicate and, and treat the customer's home as if it's their own. Cause we, all of our, all of the values that we pride our culture on are things that are representative of me and that are important to me doing what we say and, uh, doing what we say, being transparent being communicative, being detail oriented, because there's nothing worse than uh, at the end of the job when it's like, oh, this, oh, that, oh, this, oh, that. It's like, no, we, we, uh, we're, we're, you know, we keep an eye on everything. We make sure everything's clean, pristine, mm -hmm. whether it's with the culture and our team or the work that we produce right. and, and the customer service we provide. So you're, you're, you've been in business for quite a bit of time now, but obviously you're not done yet. Like you've got goals and ambitions and having, having spoken to you in the past, just like one-on-one, -on -one, I know that you're a very ambitious person, very goal oriented. So over the next, let's say five years, mm -hmm. how do you see, or how do you envision the evolution of Altona painting over the next five years? Yeah. So where I see us going now i've been very grateful to have some really amazing clients over the past few years mm -hmm. we usually service anywhere between i would say 80 to 100 projects year over year yes. and in 2022 and 23 about 75 to 80 percent of that were referrals or past clients so the fact that most of our business is now referrals or repeat customers that's a really cool spot to be in right and that, that tells us that we're doing the right things. Mm -hmm. So I think where I would like to take things is to keep building on that momentum of building really positive relationships with some amazing contractors, realtors, homeowners. Last year, we did some projects at condo buildings. So like some maintenance painting. Uh, we've done uh, quite a bit of painting at the Foundry Simcoe location at Durham College. Mm -hmm. So I think where I'd like to take things would be more renovation projects, more commercial work, like long-term care homes, mm -hmm. schools, um, condo buildings. Uh, recently, we've been doing some office decommissioning projects where once the office is done being used, mm -hmm. they need to do some patching and painting. Right. Right. So I still love doing work with uh, residential homeowners. Um, but I, like I said, I'm always open minded to trying new things. Yeah. And variety is the spice of life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like that. <laughs> yeah. What, do you have a favorite type of project that you guys like working on? Because you just mentioned it. You, you mentioned a whole different, like a whole collection of different types of clientele. Do you have a favorite? Like, I don't want to say you're picking favorites, but <laughs> is there one that you and your team, particularly enjoy working on or let you look for more opportunities to do? Um, well, I think we're looking to do more spray work. Okay. So going forward, we want to do some more work with like, well, anything with spray painting, kitchen cabinets, outsides of houses, okay. um, new renovations or new construction. Mm -hmm. uh, with spray painting, the world is really your oyster. Yeah. And so th those are types of projects that we're like looking forward to doing.
But I would say like my my favorite. I really like. Um, this is gonna sound really funny, but it's actually really gratifying to remove wallpaper and refinish the room. Really? Because <laughs> it looks like a brand new room. Is removing wallpaper? I thought it was a pain. It is. It's <laughs> terrible. But you like it. But I like the finished product. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I also actually no. I have something even better. Tell me. I love painting things black. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Garage doors, front doors, windows, your studio. Yeah. It just looks so slick. It does, eh? It does. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to. We'll have to throw up some. Uh, maybe we'll throw up some like photos of the finished space here once. Uh, just so you guys can see like the whole thing. It's like it's. I'm telling you, like all around, it's all black. The only thing we left not painted was like window trim and doors and stuff, just because like it is a rental. In case anyone's wondering. But man, yeah, you're right. The paint job is slick. It's slick. It's ex exactly the, the aesthetic I was going for. Finally got the uh, tan leather couch to kind of contrast nice. that black. A few other things that we got to get in here. But yeah, man, you killed it. You killed it for sure. Yeah, we got the modern slick look with the Austin Powers couch. If anyone, If anyone's wondering, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anyone's wondering... Or if anyone wants the same look, what what color black is this? Because I know there's different types, right? Like, yeah. So it was actually kind of funny how I stumbled upon this one. So it's a premix ceiling black from Dulux, and we are painting a commercial project in Pickering. The store is called Comfort Bras by Pauline. Okay. And she so, wanted she wanted a black ceiling. Okay. So I was like, okay. So we used it, and I was like, wow, this paint's really cool. So then I started painting accent walls in bedrooms. Like my bedroom at my house is in this paint. And I'm just gonna think of bras every time I come into the studio. <laughs> I'm starting a bra shop actually. In my studio. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's it's a sleek color because I know yeah. I've seen other black paints that just don't look as like this is like a very matted black, which I like. I don't like that too. I don't like it when it's like glossy or like, I don't know how to describe it, but this is a nice like matte finish, which I love. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's the premix, uh, glid in black from Dulux. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, kind of like to, to, to wrap this up. Cause I think we just got like a couple more minutes here. Um, tell me like, I want to, I want to just finish off with learning a little bit more about Michael Kappa, not as necessarily just like business owner or founder mm -hmm. of Altona Painting, but you yourself. So tell me like you as an individual, what are some of the like core values that you hold in, within yourself that you like mm -hmm. to reflect not only in business, but in personal life as well. Mm -hmm. And also like, this is, I, I like asking this question, who is your like biggest inspiration or person that you look to for example or uh the standard mm -hmm. well, well that's like a two-piece question so start off sure. with like what are the core values of yeah. michael kaba sure and then tell me who your biggest inspiration is sure sure okay so i would say some of my core values are relationship building trust communication accountability reliability being resourceful having fun mm. having fun uh we're on a floating rock in space you guys yes i'm looking at all of you watching this <laughs> you know things don't always have to be so serious mm. right like, like that. life's gonna throw curveballs at curveballs at us but the fact that we're here and breathing and alive you know we're very fortunate and the fact that we're able to do this mm -hmm. here in canada and have liberties and freedoms and you know, like that's, that's, that's been fought for, right? Like that's not something to be taken for granted. Amen. So gratitude, I would say is like probably one of my most cherished values. Okay. I love that. Now tell me second question. Who is your biggest inspiration? I would say my biggest inspiration. It's so hard to pick one person, but I would say like my immediate family. Okay. And if I had to pinpoint one person, my, my mom. I, I, I saw that coming. <laughs> I saw it coming. Tell us why. Well, I'm the youngest of four, right? So I feel like I'm a culmination of all my siblings and all their interests and and uh, personalities. But um, my mom, 
like all the other parents growing up just always called her super mom. Okay. Cause uh she just was, she had to deal with you. She yeah. I was a troublemaker <laughs> not a, a little bit, but not really. <laughs> but uh no, she just um has always been there, like been all of our like my siblings and I, she's always been our biggest fan and um all of my friends growing up like always cherished and loved the big breakfast she would make us after a sleepover. Nice. <laughs> Those are core memories, man. Yeah. Those yeah, breakfasts. man. But she just taught me like to do right by people and to just be decent. Yeah. So there's a lot of other things that are not coming to mind at the moment, but yeah, it's <laughs> big inspiration for me. <laughs> cool, man. I love that. I love that. Mothers are uh, they're the best people we can have in our lives, man. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, that wraps up our, we're going to have to do this again. Cause I feel like there's so much that we could still touch on and so much that we could still chat about that. We just don't have the time to do in like a 30 minute episode or set or session, whatever you want to call this um so we'll definitely have to do this again you guys will definitely see michael back in the studio probably with a different colored suit <laughs> possibly different socks comment if or, or whatever if you guys want him to wear a certain type of sock <laughs> let him know and i'm sure he'll get it for you but uh thanks michael i appreciate you uh kind of sharing your story today and opening up and letting us know a little bit more about you and altona painting and um is there anything you want to say to uh any potential customers that are considering Altona painting for their next project? Yeah, sure. If you're looking to work with someone who is smiley, fun, reasonable, and, and professional, all, all in one, then Michael Kapp is your man. He just said that in third person too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. We'll appreciate it. We'll wrap this up and uh, yeah, man. Cheers, guys.